All right, we will get started. We've got uh, head coach Greg McDermott as well as senior guard Mitch Ballock with us. Uh, we'll, after our opening statement from coach, we'll uh, take questions for either gentleman. We'll go about 20 minutes till, uh, till 10.50 Central so that Mitch can get to class. But uh, coach, go ahead with an opening statement. Thanks, Rob. Uh, you know, obviously we're excited to be back in the tournament, uh, you know, after, uh, you know, being able to watch four or five of, of Santa Barbara's games uh, over the course of the last 18 hours or so, uh, you know, very talented team, uh, you know, very experienced team uh, that are, you know, that's, that's really, uh, really good on both ends of the floor. Uh, I think they've won 18 out of 19 or 19 out of 20, something like that. So obviously playing at a high level right now, won their, won their league outright title and won the conference tournament. Uh, so, you know, we'll have our hands full, but uh, we're excited uh, for a week of preparation. And uh, I know the guys are thrilled to take the court on Saturday afternoon. All right. If you've got a question, use the raised hand feature. We'll start with Matt DeMarinas. Morning, Mitchell. Good morning. Um, you know, you guys have experienced a lot over your careers, but it, it's funny because you get to this point and I realize that you're the only guy who knows what this feels like in some regard. Obviously, this year will be different, but um, how are you preparing for that? Because this isn't really something that you guys can lean on past experiences to, to get yourself ready for. Yeah, I think we just approach it like every other game. Um, it's just that mentality now is obviously when to go home. Um, so you have to bring a, a different level of focus uh, from the regular season. Um, I played in the tournament my freshman year. Obviously, we came up short. Um, not the best showing for us a little. But, um, I mean, you learn from it. You you work and you, you keep doing what you're doing. But at the end of the day, it's just another basketball game. You know, it's just another another basketball game on, another, on, on a different stage in a different arena. So the game's still the same. The preparation is all the same. Just turn up the focus a little bit and – and we'll focus on the preparation and really just try to execute the plan that put the coaches put in, in, in place for us like we have for the last three and a half years. So John Neatala. Uh Mitch, yeah, I, I definitely appreciate that perspective to treat it as normal as possible, but it's not normal, right? Like at least from the outside looking in, we we see the NCAA tournament, it's like, whoa, big stage, you know, this is it, do or die. As a player, do you anticipate the feel of it, the pressure of the moment to, to feel different? Uh, you don't really – I mean, I'm sure there's going to be some different emotions uh, before the ball goes in the air for sure. Obviously, like you said, it's, it's March Madness. Everybody, everybody dreams of playing in, in March Madness. Um, that's what you work for all year. And then when the opportunity presents itself, you just kind of have to seize, seize the moment. And I think we'll do that. Um, obviously, the early – early butterflies start early, but I mean, it's different this year. Uh, limited fans all in one venue. It's, it's, it's different for everybody. So it just comes down to who can, who can find some normalcy in that and who can get rolling and, and, and clicking together and play together and see what happens. But at the end of the day, I think the emotions will go out, go out the window once the, uh, once the ball goes up in the air and then everything else just plays itself. And then you play the way we play, play the way we play all year. And then you live with the results, but we go out swinging the way that we play. John Bishop. Mitch, good morning. Uh, there was a moment in the second half when obviously things weren't going well, where you huddled the team up after a timeout. What do you say to the guys in a, in a moment like that, in a game like that, to keep them locked in and to, you know, keep their heads up? Yeah, I just told them, I mean, obviously you have those games once in a blue moon. Um, Mac adjusted in the locker room. You know, we haven't had a game like that since San Diego State last year, and we respond. We responded well after that. Um, but what I told the guys was just, hey, stay together, you know. Don't deviate from the plan. Obviously, this isn't our night. Uh, shots weren't going. They were making shots, and they executed their game plan really well. So credit, credit to Georgetown. But just bring the guys together and, and build that momentum in the last few minutes that we were going to play together. Obviously, um, we didn't have it going the first – uh, 34 minutes, but the next six, we just try to figure out and, and play the way that we play and, and hopefully get some momentum rolling into the tournament. Uh, because at the end of the day, that's, that's where we're going to pick up. Uh, that's where we're going to pick up where we left off and we just have to come together and stay together because we win and lose as a team. And, and that's just what we're going to do. So just find some joy in it. Obviously, 
when you're when you're down 25, 30 points, uh, it's, it's tough to smell the roses and really look at the bright side. But at the end of the day, you got to find some positivity going forward and, and really get the guys' minds in the right spot. So that's kind of what it was, and then just joke about it and laugh it off. We'll go to Rex. Hey, Mac, uh, with this year being so different with everyone having to kind of quarantine and have consecutive days of negative tests, can you just kind of take us through what that whole process and protocol is for you guys and as a coach, um, how you handle all of that? Yeah, you know, we landed about 11 last night, uh, local time. And, and by, you know, by the time we got on the bus and got over to, we had to go to a different hotel to get our COVID test last night. Uh, but by midnight, uh, we were moving again and on our way to, to our hotel. We have another uh, round of testing here in a couple hours. And if we, if we clear that uh, and get, get the 32 or four negative tests, whatever we have in our group, uh, then we'll kind of be allowed to roam within the bubble so the guys can at least move about the hotel and, um, and things like that. But, and, if, and if we get those, if we get those uh, negative tests, we'll at least be able to get on the practice court a little bit tonight. I don't think we'll do much, but allow the guys to shoot a little bit. Uh, but, you know, after that, it's kind of business as usual. We have our, we have our own meeting room. We're, we're on our own floor, uh, much like we were in New York City. And uh, I thought the Big East Conference did a great job uh, with the setup in New York. Uh, it was very efficiently run, run in terms of the testing and and the protocols and, and, you know, knock on wood, we haven't had any big East teams have any issues uh, up to this point. So uh, once we get, I think through today, I think we can maybe turn it into kind of business as usual, where we'll be able to have get together as a team and uh, you know, our guys can walk to each other's rooms and hang out a little bit, uh, but we've got to get through today first. Uh, John title. Thanks. Uh, two questions for Mitch. Uh, Mitch, congrats on getting back in the tournament. I believe you were there as a freshman in 2018. So, my two and you had a great game. I believe you were the team's leading scorer. So, what are your memories of the 2018 tournament? And secondly, do you prepare any differently or have any different expectations when you're playing a major, high major team like Kansas State versus a mid-major team like UCSB? Yeah. First of all, thank you. Um, obviously, being back in the tournament, so I was. Uh, what you play for all year. So that's cool. Um, in terms of uh, preparation, no, it's all the same. I mean, in March, anything can happen. Uh, I mean, you see my freshman year, actually, the UMBC beat Virginia on the same court right after our game. So when you see things like that, I mean, they had it going. UMBC was playing playing the game the right way. They were playing fast. They, the pace was theirs and they established it. So, I mean, in this stage of in this stage of the season, everybody's good. Um, everybody's a high-level basketball team playing at a high level. And you just have to approach every game like you're playing the number one seed or you're playing the number 16 seed or you're playing whoever uh, because you're going to get everybody's best shot. Everybody's going to go out swinging. And it's kind of, I mean, it's winner go home. So it's a desperation deal. So you have to treat every opponent like they're the number one seed and, and you prepare for that and, and your focus level has to be that. And then you have to execute at a high level to win, win in March. So that's what we're planning on doing. And hopefully we can get to that. Uh, Matt DeMarinas. Yeah, Mac, you mentioned you haven't been able to watch some film now of uh, UCSB. What's, what are your early impressions of Corey McLaughlin? Uh, he's terrific. You know, uh, you know, obviously he's a, he's a high level scorer, but, uh, you know, his assist to turnover ratio now, I think after the tournament, uh, I don't have it in front of me, but it, going into the tournament, I think he was 120 assists and, and you know, 40 some turnovers. So, uh, you know, he also uh, really makes plays for his teammates, plays with really good pace, uh, doesn't get sped up uh, and doesn't doesn't take a lot of bad shots. You know, so he's 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 really, really efficient, uh, but, you know, a very good player was player of the year in the league, obviously. And. Uh, deservedly so. From what I've seen so far, he's a uh, he's a he's a he's a talented young man. John Neatala. Uh, Mitch, Mitch, you're in quarantine, right? Right now. So, like, what's the? Uh, maybe I should ask it like this: how, how does one? How would you advise someone to get through the bubble life? You know, or or to how have you sort of tried to? a lot of time by yourself, right? Like, how do you pass the time? How have you gotten through this uh, the last couple of weeks and, you know, going forward? Yeah, uh, in New York, it was good because, I mean, our hotel was really nice. Like Max said, the Big East did a really good job. It was really 
easy, smooth flowing. So it was kind of good. And then I haven't played, I mean, I brought the Xbox uh, along with me. I haven't been a big Xbox guy in the first three and a half years of my college career, but um, I got into it. I've been playing with those guys. It's, it's, it's really fun. Um, it's a way just to kind of hang out through the mic and kind of that teamwork aspect. Um, we're all in duos or trios or quads just trying to win a game. And it's fun. It's a good, it's a good time just because, I mean, we don't play that much. We don't normally play that much. We're not very good. So when we finish in top five, top two, you know, it's really exciting. So, so that's cool. Um, so that takes your mind and, and time away from some things. Uh, and then, I mean, I waited to shave my beard till this morning just because I knew I had time. So I needed to trim that down. But honestly, outside of that, just, I mean, foam roll and, and I mean, you can text your buddies and, and play video games and talk to your family and talk to people that you haven't talked to in a while. So it's good. You can just make do with what you have. I mean, honestly, everybody's in the same situation. But if you can find some, some bright spots and, and some positivity in it, then, I mean, the better off you are. And it's been, it's been fun so far. Did you, did you say you shave your beard or you're about to shave your beard? I, I trimmed it. I trimmed it. I I can't I can't go from 35 to 19. You know, I gotta stay, I gotta stay even keel. Uh Matt D. Marinas. Yeah, my, my question is actually for Mac, but Mitch, you're a perfectionist. How are you handling these L's you're probably getting in video games after three and a half year hiatus? Like there's no way yeah. you're gonna... it's definitely frustrating just because. Uh, I'm like, like, I'm not very good. I know I'm not very good, but I, I I'm kind of getting better the more you play. Obviously that's how it works, but I don't know, man. It's just fun. I just got to take it as fun because if I get too serious, I just get so mad and we, <laughs> and then you just, I mean, rage quitting and turn the TV <laughs> off and, and all that. And then when you have a bad game, Marcus and Jake are making fun of me. So it's like, <laughs> it's fun. It's all good fun. So it's a good time. It's good camaraderie. Nice. Um, Mac, uh, just to on Denzel real quick, is there is, is he fighting something uh, physically, or is there just a confidence deal right now with the kind of shooting slump he's found himself in here yeah, lately? I, mean, I don't think he's fighting anything. I think his his approach has been really good, and obviously defensively, uh, you know, he had a terrific Big East tournament. Uh, he just didn't, he didn't make shots, and I think for the most part, he took the right shots. Uh, had some go in and out, and you could see the frustration kind of mount as he had some bounce around and, and pop out. Uh, but you know, he wasn't the only one that didn't shoot it great uh, against Georgetown. So hopefully, uh, you know, we, with a week of practice, first of all, they you know we were off yesterday, and we're not going to do much today. And tomorrow actually might be a more of a workout day than a practice day uh, with the Saturday team. So. Hopefully he can get some mojo back, just being in the gym, getting shots up, and and you know get getting his uh, timing back. Uh, but uh, you know we're going to need a, a good, great performance out of him defensively on on Saturday. That's where it starts, and uh, you know I'm confident that after a week he'll get that shooting stroke back. Got about five more minutes. We'll go to Rex. Hey Mitch, with your uh, first game being at Lucas Oil Stadium, as a shooter, when you're playing in a big space like that, is, is that something you need to adjust to where it can kind of mess you up, where you kind of overshoot a little bit at the, the beginning, shoot a little bit long, or, or is it something that, you know, a, a hoop's a hoop and it's no different? Uh, honestly, I don't know the answer to that. I'm, and my, my, my first reaction would be a hoop's a hoop. You know, it's not very much, it's not very different. Um, when I was coming from little gyms in, in Kansas to CenturyLink and, and NBA arenas in the Big East, I mean, it wasn't really that much of an adjustment. It was just hoops at the end of the day. But we have we have preparation days where we get on the court and just kind of get a feel for it and, and get your stroke going, like Coach said, and and just kind of get a feel for the gym and, and, and the space. So uh, I don't think it'll play too much of a role. Um, at the end of the day, just it's all the same distance from the rim. It's all the same – height and everything so I mean at the end of the day you just got to keep that same approach and, and approach it like any other thing and just let it fly like we do there aren't any 70,000 seat arenas in Eudora no nah, we don't have we don't have any of those hey there's there's not any northeast Iowa either yeah you got a good point there all right uh Johnny Tower. um I probably know the answer to this Greg but is it unsettling to play your worst game of the season right before the start of the tournament, you know, like how do you process that piece of it? Just the timing of that moment to have it happen and then 
well, now you're about to play an, your most important game of the year in a week. Uh, I, I'm over it. And, you know, like I told the guys, if they wanted to hang their head for an hour or so after the game, uh, go ahead and do it. Uh, but by the time you put that head in the pillow, it's, it's over. Uh, you, you can't, uh, you know, you have to have the maturity not to, you know, you can't, uh, when you have a great win over a, a UConn team the night before, you, you, can't, you can't let that go to your head either. You know, you've got to get ready for the next one. And, and uh, you know, we had one where we, we weren't ourselves. And as Mitch said earlier, that hasn't happened to this team at all this year. Uh, it's really only happened to this core group twice in two years. And as you look across the country, uh, there aren't many teams that can say that. So, you know, it, 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 uh, it happened on the wrong night for us. And sometimes you can't control that. Uh, but, uh, you know, that, that thing is, is long, long gone in the rear view mirror. Hey, and in hindsight, it's better to happen now than next week. So we'll be all right. Uh, Matt. <laughs> yeah, I was just, you know, we ask the players this every year, but I, I was wondering, Matt, do you ever get nervous this time of year? Like, especially with this group, it's such an experienced group. It's, it's been together for so long. You probably are dreading the fact that it's coming to an end eventually here. Do you, do you think about that at all, or do you just focus on uh, uh, you know, I, the, the controllables? I, I try not to. Uh, obviously, it's going to be difficult when this runs over with, you know, with that group of seniors because, you know, they've, they've done a lot for this program. And, uh, you know, to think, you know, the, the last two years, we were going to be a two or three seed last year, and we're top five seed again this year. So what, what they've accomplished and the way they've gone about it has been pretty incredible. So that certainly is going to be a – a bitter time when that all ends, but it's also going to be a time to rejoice and look back at what they accomplished and, and the, the fingerprints that they've left on our program. But uh, I guess I'm, 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 my feelings now is I'm really excited for them. You know, Mitch is the only one that's played in an NCAA tournament. He was a freshman at the time. Uh, so, you know, just, just for the guys to be able to experience this, even though it's different, uh, I've been doing it 32 years and I know how hard it is to get here. I think as young people, maybe you don't understand that, that there's there's far more teams left out of this tournament than are than are than are in it. Uh, so you have to embrace that and make sure you enjoy it. And uh, you know, I hope they can feel that, even though uh, you know it's not a normal NCAA tournament feel. Uh, having said all that, you got all 68 teams in the same city, so I think there is going to be. Uh, you know, there was there was motorcycle cops and police cars everywhere last night with uh, you know with. Uh, with police escorts, with buses. And now you have three team buses per team. So you got buses and, and police cars and police motorcycles all over the place. So, you know, it, it's a, it's going to be a neat feel for them. Uh, and then, you know, you want to enjoy it leading up to it. And then as Mitch said, once the ball goes up, it's just, it's another basketball game and you're competing against a team who's really, really good because, you know, if you, if you haven't had a great year, uh, you're not still playing. So, uh, you know, I'm excited for them. I'm anxious to get, get on the court. Uh, uh, but this has been a really special group and it'll, it, hopefully we can, uh, hopefully we can stay, stay around Indy for a few weeks. And then our final question, we'll go to John Neutala. I got a two for one. So hopefully you'll allow me to do that, Rob. Just a quick one on, on Reef, Greg, how, how was he doing and what's his status going into? Uh, he was, he was better. He was better yesterday. Uh, than he was on uh, Saturday, and obviously that that hurt us uh, not having him because he was really playing at a high level. Uh, but we'll we'll evaluate him throughout the week. You know, anytime you take a shot to the head, you have to be really really careful. Uh, and obviously his his health is our number one priority. And then, Greg, I mean, you said right off the jump, uh, you watched U UCSB what four or five times or, or four or five of their games already. What's it like as a coach? Like how how did you guys divvy up sort of the responsibility to get yourself ready for an opponent you, you've you've been through this before I know but what's it like uh trying to do a crash course on a team you haven't seen probably at all you know yeah. in a while Casey Matthews our video guy did a really good job of you know we we had an idea of where we were going to be seated probably within a couple spots one way or the other uh so you just you know you look at the other side of the bracket and try to figure out the six or eight teams that are most likely to be there so he 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 made sure he had you know, four or five games of each team downloaded so that when the announcement was made, he could get everything on our computer. So when, when we jumped on the bus and then on the airplane, we, we could get some work done. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's kind of fun, you know, because, you, you know, this, this time of year, 
uh, conference play, you know, you're, you, you know, everybody's stuff inside out, you know, their personnel. So now you're, now you're just trying to figure out what, how do we adjust from last time we played them? What might they do differently? And now you play somebody brand new where you really have to dig in uh, to the weeds, so to speak of, all right, guys, individual tendencies that you don't know because you don't play them. So you, you pay closer attention to that. And then just trying to get a handle for, you know, what, what do they what do they stand for offensively? Like what what do they want? And then defensively, what are they trying to take away? How are they going to defend certain actions? Uh, to try to put our guys in the best the best possible place uh, by Saturday. So it's uh, it's actually kind of refreshing and fun uh, to dig into a new team. Uh, but you know we'll have we'll be able to get our work done by Tuesday or Wednesday, I think, um, on Santa Barbara. And then some of my staff will you know turn their attention to a potential second round opponent. Uh, where I'll kind of stay stay in my lane here and just kind of work on Santa Barbara till we get through that one. All right, that'll do it for this session. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Mitch. Uh, if the media wants to stick around, I'll uh, answer any questions they might have about uh, uh, whatever else is going on in Indy. Appreciate you guys. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thank you. Mitch, Greg, thank you.